Uh, Thailand's electoral race is coming to a close with parties holding their final rallies before the country heads to the polls this Sunday. And by law, parties are required to stop campaigning before 6 p.m. local time tomorrow. More than 52 million of the kingdom's 66 million large population are eligible to vote this year in 400 constituencies across 77 provinces. And candidates with a stake in the game have pulled out all the stops to woo these voters. Well, this will be the first election held in Thailand since the 2020 youth-led protests, which had called for amendments to the constitution and reforms of the sacrosanct monarchy. Let's head over to Thailand and our correspondents, CNA Saksesa Samad and Mei Wong, are joining us live from the rally grounds in Bangkok. And to start with CNA, Saksith Sambat, uh, live from Bangkok. Uh, Saksith, you have been on the campaign trail over the past few weeks. Uh, UTN, that's the incumbent Prime Minister's party, how has their campaign been and what is it like there tonight? The United Thai Nation Party is a relatively young party, just a couple of years old. But the messaging has been very clear since the beginning of this campaign, and that is Prime Minister Prayut chan Vote for this party if you want to have Prime Minister Prayut chan keep on going. This is more or less their, their main messaging. Of course, they have other politicians from other parties joining him. The people that are loyal to him, they have come uh, from other parties as well as Prayut himself, who has been previously under the banner of the ruling Palampasara party. He came over to another party because of internal fractions in the ruling party. So that is why he is now on a ballot for a different party right now here. It's a very full place here at the Queen Syracuse National Convention Center, but there's also a decisively more nationalistic tone. They have been, um, ha they have been going on and on about the point of the st Thai national state ideology, which is state. Um, religion and monarchy and also their own addition, the people. That's something that they have said before. It's just something that they have said over and over again and also a underlying loyalty to the monarchy, which is a veiled jab at the opposition as they are perceiving them to be disloyal to the monarchy. Whether or not this the messaging is going to entice undecided voters, that's the remedy to be seen. But more or less, this is a invocation of those hardcore loyalists to this party and to the current government of Prayut chan uh, Success, uh, as you suggest, is whether or not people resonate with this message of continuity. Now, this will decide whether or not Prime Minister Prayut chan is able to stay in office. And what do you think is the likelihood of that happening? <laughs> Prayut chan has been in uh, office for almost nine years now since he seized power in the military coup in 2014. And um, he has been re-elected in 2019. But even though if he would win this time around, which is not very likely, he can only carry on for two more years because of constitutional term limit of eight years. It would be a halfway point to another second term. So he's already running as a lame duck. And as we are hearing, they are almost preparing to have for him to come on stage now. Now, he has been an army chief before. He has retired as an army chief for almost nine years in 2014, just a couple of weeks after the military coup. He has been a prime minister on and on. The party, of course, wants him to carry on, but it's up to the voters whether or not his political career will be retired by Sunday or not. Well, thanks for that success, Sambat, speaking to us live there from Bangkok. All right, let's uh, bring in CNA's May Wong now, and uh, she's joining us live from the main opposition Thai Party's final rally at the Impact Exhibition and Convention Centre in Bangkok. Uh, May, Thailand's largest opposition, they're urging voters not to just give them a win, but a landslide win. What exactly are their chances of doing just that? You can't really see what's going on inside because we have to step outside. It's way too loud and we have absolutely no connection. And it only goes to show you the kind of rock star reception that they're getting inside there because the hall in there absolutely packed on whether or not they can get a landslide. Well, we will have to see come Sunday where the polling will actually take place. Ultimately, this is their final opportunity, their last call to gather the citizens around this entire country to say, vote 
support us and give us a strong mandate so that we can actually form the next government and do good for the people. Now, remember here, they're also banking on the Shinawat name, given the fact that one of the PM nominees for Puat Thai Party is that of Petong Tan Shinawat, the youngest daughter of Thaksin Shinawat. And what they are really banking on is selling the point that during Thaksin's era, as well as her auntie's era of Yingluck Shinawat, they have managed to push through a lot of policies. They have managed to implement a lot of good policies, particularly for the poor, particularly for the low income. And that's the reason why they continue to want to ride on that factor, to ask people to cast the vote in order to get rid of this so-called, as they call it, a dictator government, and also to get rid of the regime that was actually formed from the last military coup that was held in 2014. And so a lot of people are perhaps hoping to give them that kind of vote of confidence so that we can actually see a change in Thailand. Well, some of the experts we spoke to actually say it's about personality more than policies. And Puat Thai's uh, policies are populist policies, much like, you know, the other parties. But how do you think, you know, what stands out? How do you think that's going to resonate uh, with the voters? Absolutely. All the policies are very populist, as you said. It's all about dishing out money. But to Puat Thai, they feel as though this is necessary, not just to win votes, but because of the hardship that the people have been experiencing. So they feel that it is necessary for a start. And ultimately, it's about giving the people a leg up, giving them a possibility to start afresh again if Puat Thai becomes the government. Obviously, one policy that has got many people talking for weeks right now and going into election as well is the digital wallet that they're giving to every citizen age 16 and above. That will be a 10,000 Thai baht digital wallet that's to be given to every citizen age 16 and above and that comes up to about 300 US dollars and that will affect some 55 million people in this country billing the country almost 16 billion US dollars to be expected for one single policy. Obviously the people are extremely happy and are very hopeful that such a policy will come through for them because they are in dire need of help. What they want to see is improvement to the economy, improvement in their job abilities, and also in their particular slogan here, as you can tell, it's about thinking big and also acting smart, meaning thinking big and being able to do and deliver. And that probably explains the uh, rock star reception there. Thanks very much. CNA's May Wong speaking to us live from Bangkok.